when you experience the awakening believe me the first thing that happens to you is your negativity is flushed out of your system forget the urge to hurt somebody or forget the need to somebody even if you want to you cannot hurt any living creature just a few days ago at the airport somebody asked me is it important to be a vegetarian to grow spiritually is it is it important i said it has an impact but it's not the show stopper there are people in colder regions in coastal places who've who've eaten meat and have reached a state of awakening so i said it has an impact but i'm not saying if you eat non vegetarian food then you are a sinner or that you've had it or hell is waiting for you or there is no awakening or enlightenment for you that's a very narrow minded bookish view of life but what happens when you awaken or as you spiritually evolve you no longer have the courage to eat knowing that somebody was actually a creature was slaughtered or killed so the first thing that happens is uh, your destructive thoughts go away and the most active chakra out of the six chakras seventh is sahasrara the most active the easiest to activate the easiest to perceive and energize is your agya chakra is your brow chakra maybe because it's very close to it it's in the brain and secondly because we have a tendency to think negative and depressing thoughts when you have nothing to do absolutely nothing to do when you say i am bored if at that time you still cannot find anything to do and you are forced to disengage from the world let's say you cannot uh, access your phone your laptop the internet or anything at that time no book most people when they are in their own company sitting by themselves experience a surge of negativity in fact one of the first and classic signs of a depressed person is their inability to connect socially they want to have fun they want to enjoy they want to go out and do things but mind just doesn't let them so isolation makes you depressed and a depressed mind seeks somehow solace in isolation even though they don't want to so the easiest chakra to activate is agya chakra when you do the kundalini mantra when you do that meditation and as you move through this shambhavi mudra followed by brahmari if you do it my take is if you're doing it correctly and when this retreat ends it's on my mind and i've promised it to the other attendees as well that i will send you a one pager uh, where you can see how much time to devote ideally every day so 5 minutes of brahmari 5 minutes of uh, shambhavi and 5 minutes of certain meditation and how to divide your time in kundalini awakening so if you did this even followed that one pager which should i which would perhaps require roughly 45 minutes every day to 1 hour within 6 months you will start to see the difference and i don't know of any other thing that would be as or more swift or rapid maybe other than smoking a pot which could uh, induce feelings of great bliss uh, as well but uh, attending a retreat is lot less expensive than smoking pot so here you get method where you're not dependent on any external substance so we've touched upon some very key things and when we come back for the afternoon session we will go over the chakras we've talked about today the three knots that are critical to particularly the brief method of invocation or invoking your vital life force or kundalini energy 
we've touched upon the first core meditation which is just drawing your attention to the Agya Chakra. Uh, even though we play the music at that time, I simply do it in this forum to create some sort of ambient sound so we cut out the external sound which could be intermittent. But when you're doing it on your own, you don't have to play music. If it distracts you, don't play it. But if you are living in a noisy region, then you can play. But the idea is you are going to keep your entire attention on your brow chakra only during that period. Followed by Shambhavi Mudra, where you draw the physical energy up and into your brow chakra. And then Bumblebee breathing, where you kind of stir things up in your consciousness as well as in your body that's made up of energy. The word for those who have awakened Kundalini, because I, it's important to clarify it when I talked about drawing up your energy. The word in scriptures, it's called Urdhva Retas. Urdhva means up and Retas means your creative energy. Ayurveda and Tantra describe Retas as the reproductive fluid of a man or a woman. In the case of man, it is known as Siman or Shukra. In the case of a woman, it's known as Shonit, her creative or procreative or reproductive energy. Urdhvretas does not mean you physically draw something up although we will touch upon that practice a little when we get to the appropriate chakra, because it's not really possible per se. It simply means you draw up your creative energy. And the beautiful thing about uh, Kundalini meditation, each chakra has direct physical benefits, benefits to your physical health as well. But what we have done up till now in the last two hours, this is the preliminary practice. Irrespective of whether you go down the route of uh, brief method or the complete method, this you still have to do every time. At the most, you can reduce the duration of it, but this has to be done every time.